Welcome back to my channel, dear friends. This is Taz from Taslima Maya Art. Thank you so much for joining me on my acrylic pouring, fluid art and mixed media channel. I appreciate you. My new times will be on Sunday from 4pm EST, that's 9pm UK. I also air on Texture Thursdays with Oak by Bettina on Thursday at 5pm UK, that's 12pm EST. And today I'm super excited to say I have a special guest up after me and that's Lance's Fluid Fusion and he'll be up right after me, you can see his link down in my description box below. My deepest gratitude does go out to my Patreon and YouTube channel members, thank you guys all so much for help supporting this channel, love you. In this video you'll see footage from a one-to-one -one I did with a friend who was completely new to acrylic pouring, having only tried it once before but she really wanted to try a bloom swipe, so here goes. Hi everyone, I'm here with my dear friend Fee and we're going to be doing a little bit of paint pouring or acrylic pouring today, some fluid art for you and I'll be showing Fee how to do all the basics from beginning to end. So I hope you enjoy this and let's get started. So initially what I do normally, Fee, say hi to everyone. Uh, hello everybody. <laughs> um, initially what I do to begin with is just take the back off just to make it tidier, otherwise I tend to have to, I mean some people don't really care about the back. Um, or place it into a frame afterwards um, and other people just want to have a really nice professional finish and they tape up the back so you're welcome to do the okay. same if you're able yeah. and usually for the much bigger canvases I do tape up the back especially if it's a commission or I know I'm going to sell it to the public sorry <laughs> it, is, it is another I was too quick on the mark there <laughs> um, so if you're planning on selling or if you're planning on doing a finition, then definitely tape up the back. It just makes it look much more slick, doesn't it? Yeah, more professional. Yeah. Um, the last workshop I did, I don't think I actually got anyone to tape up the back. And the lovely Fee has actually been on the workshop here before. And she has I've got your painting all wrapped up in lovely tissue paper. Love it. to take away later. Thank you. I can't wait. You're welcome. You didn't do a tile, a bloom tile, did you last I time? I didn't, no. No, because uh, I was looking for yours, thinking, where is that gone? I've misplaced it. No, so no, had, um, I, I watched that one. Yes. Um, and was that a bloom? Yeah, it was a bloom, so they blew it out with their mouth, didn't they? Yeah. And so. um, having watched them, I was quite glad I hadn't tried it, because I probably would have made a complete mess of it. But... Um, it, it is tricky. I think they didn't quite get the blow down right either, but they did a really good job for beginners. And it's one of the more trickier um, techniques in fluid art as well. A lot yeah. of people wait until they're a bit more experienced with everything before they do do it. But I think they had a great try, and I'll, I'll actually show you the tiles later. It came up really well, dried really well. You can still see all the cells. It's beautiful. So they did quite well. Yeah, they look good. When they did them, they look good. Yeah. I think you would be fine. Maybe I'll try it another time. Yes, yeah, so you're kind of going to be doing it today, but we're not. We're not going to be blowing it out by mouth. So this is what we're going to be doing is bloom swipe. Okay, so we're using a palette knife to swipe the cell activator over the colours that we laid down on our pillow. Okay. I just realised I haven't got my pillow with me. <laughs> I knew I'd forgotten something, but I'll grab, go and grab that in a second. So we're done with um, taking up the back. It's on to the next stage. So we just put some push pins on underneath to keep it elevated off. Um, off the surface of the table so it doesn't stick when the paint's on it. We're going to quickly check that it's more or less level. Mine is both ways. Yep, that's good. <laughs> that's good enough. It's good enough for me. Yours is maybe it needs. So if you can see that it needs to go up this way, you can just push the push pin up a little bit. Yeah. You know, and it kind of evens it out. Then you can see it's evened out a lot more. So as long as it's more or less straight, that's fine, I think. And this way, that's perfect. Yep. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Sophie, what colours are you using today? Have you chosen some? I have picked out some. Brilliant. So, and we've got... Does it tell me what... Yep, yeah, right down here. Oh, the top so one. we've got um, a violet, the Orient. Oh, uh -huh. That's strange. Orient is a violet. It's the next one down. They've got oh, all, foreign, okay. they've all foreign names on these. Um, okay, there we go then. Exactly. So we've got Oriental Violet. Brilliant. I'll just show you that. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Perfect. We've got pearl sky blue. Beautiful. I love that colour. I think it's a favourite for quite a lot of people. It's gorgeous. And that's our teaser, that one is the previous one was Pebio. And that's a Pebio. And this is an iridescent green blue. Beautiful. 
another one of my favourites. That's a really good combo, I love that palette. Um, so we are going to place it on a white base, so you should hopefully be able to see these really pop um, and really come into their own when they're combined. What we need to do is mix them up. Before we do that, I'm just going to talk, talk about a few additional colours I have here. So Fee and I are going to be doing slightly different paintings, the same technique. I might mix different colours into mine. So I also have our Taso Pearl Electric Blue here. Um, that's slightly different to the sky blue here, the blue sky blue. I also have primary magenta with some vivid intense fluorescent red, really red that is, and we also have Baltic amber. And these are mixed with um, the pouring medium of white troll. And Fee's just going to quickly mix up one for us. Um, quickly, the cell activators are um, Australian flow troll and um, oxide black from Amsterdam. And then we have Atelier copper mixed with um, Australian flow troll. And we also have a golden iridescent bronze. And that was a 1 1 ratio, the others were a 3 1 ratio, 2 to 3 1 ratio. So we've got those already mixed up. We're just going to, well, Fiona's going to mix um, one of hers up just to quickly show you. So it's going to be probably one part paint, so we can pop some paint into there when you're ready. Are we measuring this or just, just go I think going? We can eyeball it, yeah. I think we, we're looking for consistency really, so let's just eyeball it and not measure it this time. Around. That's good. It's a nice amount. I think that's fine. Yep, and then we're going to add a little wedge on. I'm just going to add it for you. Make it easier. I've shaken this up quite a fair bit. Let's add that much to begin with, and we can see the consistency, and then we can move on then. Find a stirring stick for you. Thank give you. Give it a nice little stir. I'll do the others for you as well, Robbie. See what that looks like. The problem with these cups, these baby cups, is they fall over unless they fall. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a bit annoying. These things are all sent to try us. They are, I know. I think the lid is actually heavier than the cup is, which is insane. Uh, yeah, it's one of those, um, the seal around the top mm -hmm. takes more plastic than the base does. Hence why you end up with the problem. I've got some flow chart right on my canvas there, so you too. <laughs> <laughs> it's already time to get on there. So I'm just going to mix that up, let's hold it up to the camera and just give it a That's a really nice fibre. And one of the things about the weight troll is, um, it's like float troll, it um, looks like it dulls the colours when you mix it. So you can see there's a slight difference, that's slightly lighter in the pot compared to what you're seeing in the tube. Yeah. But what happens is once it's dry that vibrancy comes back because float troll tends to primarily dry transparent or translucent at the very least. So you will get that vibrancy back later. And particularly if you varnish the piece afterwards as well. The other thing you okay. can do is just add more paint if you don't like the colour until there's, until there's more of an intensity of colour that you prefer. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. Okay. It's different. It's, you've got a better idea of um, how it's going to come out than I have. Yes. But that's gone slightly bluer than I would have liked. So. Okay, you can add more fruit troll in that case. You can also add water up to 10%. So that it's to the right consistency. That's horrible. So I might add a bit no, more. That, to that, I think, yeah. from what you've said, the fact that that's going to go darker when it dries. Yeah. I'm hopeful that I that will work. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll know when it dries. <laughs> yeah. Well, the ones you did before, you did um, a cup flower dip, reverse flower dip, didn't they? Yes. Using a, a dessert cup. They they dry darker. So when they were wet, they looked lighter. And when it dried, you'll see it later when it's in the house. But it's actually dried darker, so it's got a nice vibrance. So you can really see the colours. We used a black base for that one as well. We yeah. did, yes. Yeah. And it looks quite nice against black as well. So that one's ready. And what we're going to do is a bloom that's a palette knife or kind of, yeah, so a swipe bloom. And these are bloom paints, obviously, um, bloom recipe. So I'm going to put down my pillow paint. So there's a pillow paint, the paint that goes underneath onto my canvas. Like so. I hope there's nothing in here that shouldn't be in here. I'm just going to pop that down, and we need a bit of that, and I'll put that back in there, and I've got my palette knife now, and I'll just spread that out a little bit, okay? So right to the edge ideally, because I do want it to fall off eventually. Is that self-leveling? Paint can be, it depends how thick it is. Okay. It... But obviously if it's thinner, it moves faster. When you tilt on spin, if it's thicker, it doesn't, but then you also need to hold up your colours. So we're going to lay our colours on top of this. We want it to hold them up and not sink right through them. Okay. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, yeah. Sometimes when they're thin, and I had this problem when I first started out, I was thinking, it looks absolutely beautiful when I poured, and then 20 minutes later, it's all disappeared. Where's it gone? When the pattern was sinking through. So, because the, 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 the colours were actually um, higher in density than the actual pillow that I had down. So, there's yeah. so much dry and there with this technique, because it took a long time to figure out how it works for us over in the UK. That makes sense. I wasn't even using um, a weight chalk back then, I was using um, the Valspar base C and trying to mix it with all sorts of different things, poly, poly acrylic, um, min wax oil, there were so many recipes flying about and everyone was swearing it worked and nothing really worked for a very long time, it was so frustrating. So you've left a, a deeper pool of the float in the middle? Yes, right. I have because I want that to spread out, in fact I might need to make it even more deeper. Okay. Um, because, yeah, I want it to spread out, so actually if I use a spoon it's probably easier to just drizzle it on. This is a bit thick, I might just spray some water into that for the oil. I'm going to spray a couple of squirts into there, just give it a slight stir. So I might have a few of my um, thumb things. I'm just going to torch this one. Okay, I'm just going to lay my colours down. So I am going to use one of your colours if that's okay with you. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Brilliant. So I'm just going to put it... I don't really know. I'm just going to go with the We're just going to make a pattern in with the paints. Yes. You can do exactly the same as well if you want at the same time. With your colours. I'm working on it. Okay. The, bra the brain cogitating patterns. <laughs> So I'm just going to put some of this multi camera from Colour Art over the top, like so. That's why I'm hoping to achieve not too much of that. And I'm going to torch it very quickly. Right. I need to hurry up as usual. <laughs> Take your time, it's fine. There's a number of times I thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> I should think that's quite easy. Yeah. I know I've done it. Yeah. And I've, I've got to a different bit in the wood turning. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't record that. What did I, how do I go backwards? Yes. I can't put the wood back on. I know. Right, I'm just I've just put some of the cell activator on my palette knife. I'm okay. going to just sweep it through. I'm gonna actually start in partly in the white. Thinking which way do I want to go this way? Oh wow. And then I'm gonna wipe it off on my tissue. And I'm gonna go in with the black. Already you can see cells popping up there. Amazing. That's fabulous. Thank you. It does look amazing, doesn't it? It's yeah. Just, it's just that reaction it's like, of the paint, the densities, you know. Right, I'm going to go in now with my black cell activator, so my oxide black. I'm going to go this side this time. And then wipe that off. Wow, that's really selling up, that black. I love that. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, more gold for me. That's the, one of the things I find is there's so many different tones mm -hmm. of golds and bronze. Go. There you are, there. So many different brands of paint, so many different tones and hues. Yeah. I need more practice with this side of things. <laughs> I'm not very good with a dragging out thing. You're going to be better than me. That I'm quite sure of. Don't know about that, you're doing good. If you're a beginner. Well, I'm kind of making it up as I go along, but... I think we all do. <laughs> Even the people who've been doing a while. Um, I'm really happy with this. I'm going to spin it and see what happens. Um, if that pillow paint is too thick, it's not going to spin very well. I'm not going to move. Actually, I might have to ask you to move yours in case it goes flying onto yours. Okay, <laughs> I imagine no problem. That. I'm just going to show the camera this piece. Gorgeous. Again, you can do any shapes you want as well by just dragging your palette knife through it. Wow, those sounds on the bottom. They're gorgeous. I'm trying to try and show the camera by dropping this. I don't know if you can see that. And the gold as well, and the bronze. To me, it looks like a baby elephant. <laughs> I don't know why, it's strange. Oh, yeah, I know, I can see, I <laughs> can can see, see that. <laughs> or, or, um, no, elephant, I was going to say rhino. Oh, but, yeah, rhino um, actually with a horn. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's different. It looks interesting. Was I that... don't know whether I should put... No, I think I need some purple in the other side as well. Okay. Maybe not lots, but just a bit. Yeah. You've pretty much done a painting on itself with the, with the, the steering stick. 
I don't, yeah, kind I of. I almost don't want to ruin it with the palette knife. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, um... This has turned out very different and strange, but nice. That's cool. It's, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I can still go in and more paint some and do more to it and keep doing stuff to it, but I should. Let's do that. Let's, I'm going to add more paint to it than do more palette knifing to it. So... That's the bit I'm not sure about is the palette knifing, but... Right. <clears throat> be brave. Um, <laughs> Be brave, you'll be fine. Yes, yes, right, I'll be brave. Okay. So what am I going to do? I love all this purple with the red and the blue mixed together. Oh yeah, that's lush. See that, I don't, that just looks like chaos to me. <laughs> What's wrong with chaos? I suppose, um, partially because of the wood turning, I'm, I like things organised and... Oh, like, yeah. Um, like me then. <laughs> I'm the same. Oh, I can see you're going to do your um, your thing now. Ooh. I'm going to try. Yes. Do your best, you'll be fine. Which part are you going to go through first? Oh, let me, let me torch it for you. First. Oh, yes. I can see lots of bubbles. There you go. Um. Right, let's try a smaller bit first. Okay. So I've got to try and keep this flat and smooth, haven't I? Mm -hmm. I'm just having another go on mine because why not? <laughs> um, okay, well that's different. Yeah, I'm adding more to it. Seeing where we go. Ooh, wow! Look at the cells that come up on that iridescent forms. Look at oh, that! Wow. Oh my god, it's actually worked. I went to do the same on the other side. Not as much back. I must make sure I don't have so much fun I completely forget about picking my kids up. <laughs> this has happened before. Yes, I, I, they might not appreciate that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they won't. Uh -huh. Oh, look at yours. I've done quite a few swishy um, palette knife in there. Mm. It's nice though. Do you want yeah, the... that bit's. I was going to do a bit of gold either side of the black. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not Scott. Um, what did bronze, you say? Bronze. bronze. I know I keep saying gold all the time. <laughs> Love this. I'm gonna actually cover much of my canvas, I think. That red is just so vibrant. I know. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah. I'm just loving swiping at the minute and I think it's super fun. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep swiping until the whole canvas is covered for me. I love it. It's just that's lovely. What colour haven't I used? I haven't used this one. Oh, actually, I haven't used your gorgeous sky blue. And if this is nice enough, we can use it to um, do something else on it as well, like a embellishment or something, maybe. Mm. As a background to so something, maybe some yeah. texture flowers on top. The great thing, you can create loads of lovely backgrounds with other things. Yes. And you can even cut up the, this um, canvas and use it for other things as well. Yeah, I thought I was doing that. Lots of bubbles, eh? And you, that sky blue was so many bubbles. Mm. Um, let's do this one now. So, I love this one, so I'm going to use more and more. I might go in with the black again. But gorgeous, that is really nice with the black. Um, well, some of that's gone in the black and some of it. So, I don't know whether to redo the black down here. Let me have a look. Yeah, no, sorry. Oh, yeah. Down, down there, it's got lost. Yeah, I would add more colour to it and go over it again. Okay, So just yeah. redo it, add more colour to it. Um, you can't really go wrong if it's faded, then you can just... But remember to thicker, put thicker, because you were quite thin with your colours. Oh, was I? Yeah. Um, oh, I thought I'd done it quite thick. People just pour it on, you know? Oh, okay. You can just okay. pour it on, you don't have to use a stick. Um, pour mm. it on, just keep moving it. So, yeah. I'm just going for a mad amount of cells, as many as I can get at the minute. Let's drop it up. I'm going to go all the way from there to that end now with my... No, actually, let's do this one, it's easier. So I'm going to go all the way across. That's good and thick. <laughs> yes, that's what we want, thick. Well, I'm just 
<laughs> I'm just pushing my palette knife onto the black um, silicon mat, and every time I do, I can see the cells coming up. Look. Can you oh, see wow. It? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's even selling on a silicon mat. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, any bits I don't like, I'm literally just going to go over it with, this, with my palette brush. So, I really don't like this, this section here. I'm going to go over it. Oh, they just add to the texture. Yeah. Any bits that are not that interesting, you can just add some swirlies in. Ah. Give it a go. Okay. Um, that's what I'm looking for. just like causing chaos <laughs> yeah and it it doesn't matter if it's not nope. completely right so long as you like it exactly and as long as you're having fun oh wait, i'm having fun <laughs> definitely having fun good good that's what i'd like to hear hello you hello you yep i'm still having fun So towards the end my two kids came in to have a little sneak peek at what was going on and here they are just looking at the paintings um, and I think Fiona really learnt a lot in the first lesson using a blue swipe and she's raring to go again. What do you think of hers? I don't know. Nice. Nice. I love it. You like it do you? Yeah I don't know. It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> no it's not a mess is it? <laughs> Fiona's first time doing this technique and She's done brilliantly. Look at all the cells she's got. Loads of them. I, I particularly love this part here. Really pretty. And the skewer work. You can see the skewer work now. Yes. Yes, it's good. <laughs> yes. Bloom swiping is definitely a technique that needs a lot of practice, but I think for a complete beginner, first time trier, Fiona did amazingly well. She got lots of cells. She did the swirlies. And she's really, really happy with it. And yeah, she's asked to come back again very soon. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you each and every week. And don't forget, up after me will be the amazingly talented Lance's Fluid Fusions, Lance Travis. And his link is down in my description box as well. So if you get lost, just go on that and just click his link. And do give him some love and support as well. Thank you all so much. And I will see you again very soon.